Oh, when I see the painting out, I know there's work involved. Now, what is this video all about? I got the, if you were with me the other day, you would have seen that I painted these uh, bathroom walls and I did it with a little nine inch mini roller. You gotta check that video out. It didn't really take me that long. And I got it, I got it nice and straight up along there. Didn't get anything anywhere on the, on the ceilings or, or on the door frames or anything. But now you see that it's gonna be time to start cutting in. And on this particular video, I am just only going to be showing you how to cut in the ceiling and if you were with me the other day watching me paint these walls, I think I said I would show you how to cut in without really having that much knowledge about having to cut in and without really cutting in per se uh, to where you've got to do it really super close. So I'll show you how to do that here in a, mo in, in a minute. And what I, like I'm saying, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut in the ceilings and I'm going to cut in above that tile. And if you see, if you notice along that tile, there's grout there. You see that? There's a layer, a line of grout right up there. How am I going to cut in next to that? Well, I'm not a professional painter and you don't have to be either. I, I would normally cut this in uh, with a cut in paintbrush and uh, take my time with it and stuff. But see, it's right up next to that grout line. And I wanna keep that grout line there. And um, I want it to be nice and straight. And I wanna do this to where somebody else, you, as a matter of fact, can do this without that much knowledge. So that's why I am going to mask this off. I'm going to tape this all off and I'm going to use masking tape and I'm going to put that up there so that I don't have to be um, really that careful when I start putting on this paint and if you've never cut in before, hey, I'm going to show you how we're going to do it by using masking tape, okay? And you know, in the old days, this was the only type of masking tape they had, right? And I've got some more masking tape, and I think I'm going to use that. Well, nowadays, they generally use the blue tape, and that's really better. It's designed to not have your paint bleed through there. Well, I don't have enough of that, do I? And I'm going to save that for something else. I'm not even going to use the blue and I'm not going to go back to the store and, and buy some more blue tape. But the blue tape, believe it or not, is probably twice as expensive, maybe more than twice as expensive as buying regular masking tape. And this is all I've got, and this is all I am going to use. And I'm going to do this and show you how to do that here in a minute. Okay, so my... my uh, paint on the ceiling is white and I need to cut that in all the way along the side and when, after I put the masking tape up I'm going to do the ceiling I'm not going to be you know I, I, I need to get it as straight as I can and your tape line your cut in line is only as good as your masking tape when you put it on there so you know, is there a right and wrong way to do anything, pretty much? Yeah, there is. And I'll show you how to put the masking tape on in the right way. Now, here's one other thing that I'm going to end up having to do, and I don't know if I'm going to make a, a separate video of it or not. I'm going to end up having to paint this door frame. And I'm only going to, and see, this is white too, so when I have the white paint out, I'm going to get the ceiling all done first and then I want to come down here and I want to paint this. Now before we moved in to the condo, I was pretty sure that I was going to be able to paint. I was going to do all the painting, get all the carpet down, do everything I needed to do before we moved in. And that included the bathrooms and so I had pulled all the bathrooms apart and I was going to, I was going to get all that painted and everything and then I ran out of time. We changed our 
mind on some things and we decided to get moved in here in a little bit quicker time so when I got ready to paint all the door frames and stuff I thought I'm gonna do the bathrooms later so when I painted all the door frames initially I painted them all to here and I didn't paint any more I didn't I didn't go from here over because normally when I when I paint uh, door casings I'll, I'll do it with the white paint and I'll, I'll get a little bit on the the wall let's say and I won't have to worry I don't really worry about cutting this in exactly and um, then I come back after I do the walls I do the walls the same way and then I'll cut the wall into the casing well uh, because I didn't do the bathrooms I just finished the the door frames out to about here so now I've got to I've got to paint from here to there not only that I, I want to get a nice straight line up against the wall and I got to do that same thing uh, at the top edge and when I and when I paint this side of the door frame obviously I can't get the edge over there so I'm just gonna go the white from here over to there and blend it and and uh, and recut it in uh, just on this face because this edge has already been done when I painted this edge I, I went over to about here see so now all I have to go is from here to there but on the top I'm gonna go from here to there but I'm gonna paint the top edge uh, and when I do this I'm gonna go from here to there but I'm gonna do this edge over here do I really have to paint that edge uh, you know with new paint yeah I mean you, you don't really you, you don't really have to but I'm going to because everything else I painted that way and I want uh, you know it's just a, a little bit of pride in my work to make sure that I've, I've done the whole thing you know what I mean and so when I have the masking tape out I, I could cut this in and be real real careful with that and stuff but it's gonna be kind of tricky to get it down in there without getting it on the wall and stuff and I really don't want to get it on the wall as much because when I get the white paint on here then when I'm doing the gray uh, it I've only got one coat of paint on here with the roller if I get a whole, too much white on here then I have to cut in twice because my uh, my um, gray paint doesn't necessarily won't necessarily cover in one coat on here if I have some white semi-gloss paint on there too because the other color was that tan does that make sense hopefully I'm not confusing you there so when I put the masking tape up uh, all the way around I'm gonna finish and I'm gonna do it around the edge of the door frame uh, at the top and the side as well as I'll, I'll pull this back and I'll put some masking tape on the floor right in here and probably along the edge of the of the base right there just so I don't get anything on there that way I can do it and you know what I'll probably end up taking this uh, strike plate off too so that I can get this edge all the way through there or well I, I, I mean I probably could leave it and be careful but because when I painted this initially I painted over and probably went over to there so I probably I probably could leave that if I want or I can take it off I'm not quite sure what I'll do just yet but see that's that's all I'm going to concentrate on um, when you look at your project for a whole bathroom and stuff you got a, you got lots of stuff to do painting the whole ceiling then cutting it in then painting the walls cutting that in and um, around the toilet around the, the tile, around the sink, around the uh, light switches and stuff and I'll, I'll mess with that after I get done with the ceiling. I'm not even gonna worry about anything and because uh, I'm in a bathroom I took the door off, I took the hinges off, I got that all set over there that's already been painted from before and I don't want that in my way and um, you know you just take you just take this little bathroom one step at a time because see I got all this stuff all around here and I all I did um, first is I concentrated um, on doing the ceiling section then after that dry and I had to put two coats up there and after that dry then I concentrated on just the walls okay 
Now I'm gonna go back up. Now that all that's dry, the ceiling's dry, now I'll come back and do the cut in for the ceiling. And when all that's done, then I'll come back, um, wait for the ceiling to be dry all the way, then I'll come back and figure out how to get the rest of the uh, walls done, whether or not I'm going to put masking tape up there on the ceiling that I've just painted, or if I'm going to if I'm going to cut that in with the paintbrush uh, without putting any masking tape up. Well, I'll have to figure that out to see how well this masking tape this this masking tape is is kind of a test to see how well I can uh, get it up there and do. Uh, this whole thing because I think I told you before I'm going to show you how to do this without having to have any special knowledge about how, how to use a cut-in paintbrush and how not to get it on the walls and all that kind of stuff because you know I, I could I could cut this in pretty good uh, and have it look acceptable without putting any masking tape but I'm going to do the masking tape show you how to do it that way in case you're you're really not you know you're, you're probably going to be a beginner or an intermediate person who's watching this video. You're not going to be somebody who knows how to cut in. If you know how to cut in, you know how to paint, you're not watching this video anyways, right? And so you're watching this because you want to learn how to do it and how to make it look like a painter's project and how to make it look like a professional even though you're not a professional, right? That's why you're watching these videos, okay? So my next step is I've got to... I've got to clean this up a little bit, get my, uh, get my little ladder out. And I, I just use my little step ladder like this. This works really good. Nice wide steps. Don't, get, don't use one with little ones because you're going to twist your ankle on it. This is, this is a nice easy one to use. And I'm going to get this cleaned up. I'm going to get up there and put masking tape on. Okay, I got some masking tape up, but I want to show you uh, the right way to put masking tape up. Now see, I put that masking tape up right up tight to the ceiling because I wanted to cover up that grout line. Okay, I wanted to do that. And if you notice, I put little pieces up there. Little piece, little piece, little piece, because the grout line is just indented just a hair lower than the tile, so I couldn't put that that uh, masking tape up exactly how I normally put it up because I wanted to kind of follow the grout line in case the grout line wasn't perfectly uh, straight, it's kind of wavy in certain areas. But um, I put that masking tape up to there and then, and then I ran it along this ceiling here and along this one, okay? Can you see now that, that when I get ready to get up there with the paintbrush, I'm just gonna paint that little edge and I don't have to be really precise with cutting it in with a cut-in paintbrush and a nice steady hand and maybe you've got a backhand it up there because you're going up upside down, up above your head. It's a little bit different cutting in a ceiling as opposed to walls, you know what I mean? And so it's important to get that tape up there nice and straight. And I try to get that uh, as long of a piece as I can. Well, you can't really, you can't really do that um, by tearing little pieces off, little piece, little piece, little piece, and then it gets kind of tricky. And like I say, uh, cut in, um, having your nice straight line up there is only as straight as whoever's putting the masking tape up. And if you don't put the masking tape up right, once you pull that down, you're not going to have a nice straight line. Okay? So I'm going to get up there in a minute and show you how I normally put it. And I'm, I'm going to uh, run a piece here over to there. I've already ran a piece along the top and I still got to go from here here on down to about there. I've already I've already masked it from here and I, I think I might put another piece of masking tape here because I want to I'm gonna try to get this edge here if I can with my little cut-in paintbrush. I think I'll be able to do it um, nice as long as I get some masking tape there. I 
I've already masked down here on the floor because remember I've got to I've got to paint this this piece here. I had that down. It already came up. I've got masking tape underneath there too. Sometimes sometimes I'll just I'll just mask that and put a little piece of cardboard on the floor if if I don't have the craft paper down. But I still have the craft paper down from painting painting these uh, walls. You know I could take the craft paper down out and just uh, put put a little piece of cardboard along the uh, wall, you know, when I get ready to paint. But hey, we're just talking about the ceiling right now, right? So I'm gonna get up there and show you uh, do's and don'ts on putting masking tape up, okay? Okay, here's, here's what I don't wanna see you do. Most people, when they get up here, they'll, they'll end up pulling a piece of masking tape off, let's say. You know, yay far. And then, and then getting up here and trying to line this one piece up exactly from here to there and then go across and then get and then take another piece. Okay. There there's only there's only so far you can do it. Uh, or I've seen them well here. And you you could you could go around the whole ceiling like this if you want, really wanted to, and line it up like that and try to try to get your eye out of the light and put the next piece up and then do that and keep going and keep going. But it makes it makes it really difficult because once you pull it all off, your your ceiling might have some dips in it and uh, it might not be straight. And, and I've seen. I've seen some people, oh, okay, yeah, just, just go like this and, and put it on there and then they hold it like that and then, they, and then they, they try to take this like that and then try to push that down there and kind of line that up from there and then, and then go out a little bit further and, and, and try to, you know, get this back edge done first before they go down. It's just, it's, it's kind of tricky to do that, okay? And so what I normally do, um, I'm gonna put this masking tape back on here. Um, what, I, what I normally do is a little bit different way, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, move my, uh, my ladder here. Let's see if I can't. See, I'm, I'm not sure if I can get it all the way. Because it's a brand new, it's a brand new roll. And so it's gonna be kind of heavy. I'm looking back because I want to make sure I'm not I'm not uh, covering. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm, I would start right here uh, in the corner. Okay. Now I'm going to put my masking tape right up against the ceiling, okay? And now I can roll it right down onto the wall. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. See this this first I'm going to I'm going to just take that piece off because it was a piece from the start, okay? And um I'm going to start over with a new with the with the new piece okay let's start off with the new with the new piece and I'm gonna get it right up right up in here I'm gonna I'm gonna hold my masking tape flat up against the ceiling so I get that started right okay now now I can just roll that I can roll it right down onto the wall where I want it. Do you see what I mean? And I can keep pulling this out. I've got it tight to the ceiling. And now I can take that and just roll it in my hand. And it's gonna go down flat. And it's right up where I want it, nice straight. Now I, I hold my finger here. And I don't wanna go out too far, okay? And I can roll that right, right on down. And this, this wall has a little, 
between the wall and the ceiling is kind of dipped just a little bit. Okay. Now I'm holding the, I'm holding the tape a little bit different than how I would if I wasn't doing it exactly like this. See. Okay. And it's always up tight. Can you see? That I've got that up tight. And so now when I swivel it down, it just goes right down where it needs to go. Now granted, I can only go so far before I have to get down off of here. And I can't just let this dangle. If this was a, if this was a thinner roll, I could let it dangle. But see, if I let go of, if I let go of this right now, it's going to go because it's too heavy. Okay, so I, maybe I can pull out that much. Let's see if I can. And now I'm down low enough so that I can get back up on my ladder without, without taking it off. Um, see, I'm, try, I'm trying to do it without having to stop, go, stop, go with little pieces of masking tape. See? See there? And then I just, I just do some more. I think you can see that. And um, let's see if I can do it. One low, lower strand See there. And that's, the, that's the proper way to get, to get it nice and tight. See, it's off right there a little bit. So I can start again. And that is straight. Okay. Like I say, your cut-in is only as straight as your masking tape line. And um, at this point, I've got to finish off this little bit. And I already, I already took a little piece and went from the corner over. Okay. And now I can line that up. Okay. That's the proper way to put masking tape nice and straight along the ceiling. You can do that on walls, you can do that on baseboard. I'm even going to show you how to do that right here along this uh, door frame edge right now. Okay, hopefully you can see this. I'm in a small confined area so I'm trying to, I'm trying to do this so I'm not going to, so, so I'm going to be able to show you without me Kind of getting in your way. I'm hoping I'm not. I'm not going to be in your way too much. Okay. I'm going to be right here, and so I'm going to do my my tape, my masking tape trick the same way. I'm going to hold it up there, push it down to the to the wall, and it, it gives me a good place to start too. Even when I do that. Okay. So now I'm like that. I just push it down. Got it out at an angle. You don't want to try to push this down with your finger because then your the masking tape bends and stuff and twists. So I, I don't want to go any further than that. Now I just now I just swivel the masking tape roll. It goes right down exactly where you want it every time. And just just do a little bit at a time. You're not you're not doing a race. Don't don't try to get this so long that. You, tr you try to line it up against the wall and it doesn't go. You see what I mean? I'm, I'm just doing a little bit out of time here. See? And I push it right up, right up there. I don't know, uh, okay, yeah, you can, you can see that. Okay, I'm going to lower it down now. Down next to, next to here. I think you can, I think you can see what I'm, what I'm doing. We'll just get this out of the way. I haven't even taken these cover plates off yet because I'm just concerned about the, the uh, ceiling right now and painting this, this door casing right here and this edge right here. I want it straight, the paint up against the wall. And um, this is a good way to do it. Okay. Now that, that might... I might have to uh, stop and go to get that because I want this edge straight up against the wall. Okay, from where the from where the cover plate is. Okay, so now I can now I can start 
I can, I can start here again. I'm going to hold it up and I'm going to hold this masking tape flat right up against there where it needs to go. Okay, there, I got a good starting, a good starting point. And now I just hold it right up against there. I, I can't even really see the corner, with, but I, I don't have to because the corner is right where the, my masking tape roll is. I know, I know it's exactly where it needs to be, even though I can't see that edge. You see what I'm saying? Look at that. Okay. And I don't have to go any, any further than that because I've already done this other little piece. Let's see, trust me, if you, if you try to do one little piece at a time and hold it up there and get it exact, it just never seems to work. Now, right here, I'm just going to put another little piece down here just because I want to get this edge and it seems as though I want to get it done right. I'm just going to do this again. When I got it to there, I'm just going to pull down. Just take that and swivel it down. Swivel it down. It's a good way to do your masking tape. Trust me. You try that, and whenever, whenever you can do it that way from now on, <laughs> you will. You will. It's nice and straight. There's no kinks in it. I know it's right up uh, tight to the edge of my casing and yeah could I have could I have cut that in around there um, with with a cut in brush yeah I could and and um, I would have to be really super careful as I did it and knowing that if I got a little bit on the wall I'm gonna cut in the wall at the last but hey this is gonna let me do it perfectly in fact I would I if I didn't have a cut-in paintbrush, I could I could use any regular paintbrush for that, and it would look like I used a cut-in paintbrush with an angle on it and all that kind of stuff. You see what I'm saying? So even though I didn't use the blue masking tape because I didn't have enough, I used regular masking tape. It'll it'll be fine, and I'll I'll show you how to cut this ceiling in here in a minute. But but isn't that a nice way to put that masking tape on? and how I put it on nice and straight there. Even if your, your ceiling's got a couple dips or bows or something, as long as you don't pull your masking tape roll out too far and just push your masking tape roll up to the top and roll it in, you know your, your, your uh, masking tape is virtually going to be as straight as you could ever put it up at all. Okay. Now granted, over here I didn't do that. As you can see, I put up one little piece, one little piece, one little piece all the way along there because I was having a hard time uh, getting that because I, would, I didn't have a flat surface, see? I, and so I wanted to get that, that top edge first, so I felt I needed to do it by hand. One little piece lined up the next piece to that and that and that and that because it was a grout line and the grout kind of dipped in just a hair. You know, flat ceilings, yes. I'll, I'll, I'll try as best I can using it off of the roll just like I showed you without, without uh, um, cutting it anymore and I have to. Obviously, once you start an inside corner, you've got to pull out a little bit so that you can get your first piece in there pretty much. Or you can overlap it a little bit and kind of bend it in there and do whatever you want. But, but you see, I'm, I'm hope that I gave you some tips what to do and what not to do when putting your masking tape up there. I know, I know my line is nice, nice and straight up against there, don't I? Even though I couldn't even see what I was doing for the most part, I got that baby nice and straight. Hope you learned something. So now I'm ready to cut in now. All right. And because my line's not that far, you're not really going to see it uh, as much as you would as if you had installed the paint on your ceiling with a nine inch 
paint frame and you were two inches off the wall in certain areas, oh yeah, the, that's fine. The, you just you just cut that in. Well, the more cut in that you do, the more likely you are to see the cut in or putting your paintbrush strokes on there if you don't if you don't put it on as nice and tight as you uh, install your your paint. Maybe you have to cut in an extra time because your paintbrush is, is pulling some off. In fact, I may have to cut in the ceiling twice because you remember, if you were with me when I was installing this paint, I used a little six inch mini roller. And because I was changing this to a white ceiling instead of the tan ceiling, see that the, the, uh, the ceiling was the same color as the, as the walls from before, okay? And if you're changing it out to white, then uh, chances are you're gonna have to put two coats. If you just put one coat and think, oh yeah, I can do it, and put it up there nice and even, it never works, trust me. I don't care if you use a nine inch roller, and a lambskin roller cover, or what, okay? You're still probably going to see remnants and uh, highlights and um, uh, different uh, stop-go marks and holidays and stuff like that uh, on your ceiling because you're, you're changing it out to white, okay? So when I cut this in, even if I've used thick paint, sometimes painters will use uh, their paint and, had, and it's kind of thickening up in their paint tray or, or a paint bucket or something. Uh, they might think, oh, I can put that on there with just one coat, even though I put two coats uh, out with a roller, I might be able to get this done with one coat with a paintbrush, okay? You're not as good as a professional painter, and you're not gonna know all this, okay? So if you put on with one coat and it dries and you think you need to put a second coat, I would say put a second coat on, okay? And what am I gonna use to put that on? I told you uh, I had a cut-in brush, and I do. I, I used this for this entire condo when I was cutting in all the ceilings and around the, and the baseboards and the, and the door frames and all that kind of stuff. I use this right here. That's what I use. It actually has an angle on it, and you can kind of hold it like this instead of having the handle stick way out. I'm using that. It's a two inch, but, and, and, it, and this kind of, it's not real th too thick and it kind of tapers a little bit, especially when it's wet. So it's, it's pretty easy to use. But you know, if you don't have a cut-in brush like this and if, you, if you're not even sure if you want to do any painting after your first project, could you, could you use a, a, a cheap old paintbrush like this? Yeah, you could use one like this. Or uh, where's, where's the other one I had? I had it. Oh, here it is. See? This is just a cheapo uh, two inch throwaway paintbrush and I've been using this for our, all kinds of stuff. And you know, it still works. Could I use that up there and have it look just like a professional painter when I get done? Yeah, because, because I did such a good job up there when I installed the, uh, uh, the paint with the mini roller, I don't, I don't have to go very far out from the ceiling, do I? Look at that. I mean, three quarters of an inch all the way along there. And that's because I use my mini roller. And if you didn't watch that video, you should watch that. I show you how to get it on nice and straight like that without hitting the walls or anything. Look at that. How did I do it so, so good? And now because I decided to put masking tape up there, when I put the paint on there, it doesn't, you know, I can be fairly sloppy to a certain extent if I wanted to, or I'm still gonna do the best I can, but do I, do I really need a cut-in paintbrush up there? Couldn't I use a throwaway paintbrush? I call these throwaway paintbrushes, but I don't throw them away after I use them one time. See, this is a three inch, they even have a four inch like that. Uh, and, you know, uh, obviously they're not as thick, they're not as nice as something like this. This will hold more paint, but in a bind, could I even do it with this one, even though some of these bristles uh, aren't even straight anymore? Yeah, I could. 
if I want it. It's going to take me more trips up back and forth because I'm going to use a paint tray and I'm just going to dip here and then go up and do a little bit, come back down, dip again. If I had a little bucket that I wanted to hold, could I do the whole thing with that and have it look perfectly straight? Yeah, I could. Or I could do it, or, or I could do it with that. But I'm not going to. I'm going to I'm going to end up using that. Okay? But I'm just saying you could you could use something like this or you know those big cheap paint brushes and, and the and the bristles are real fat on it. Could could you get up there and and um, do it that you probably could but you know I wouldn't recommend going with anything more uh, than two and a half inches. This is a this is a two inch cut in paintbrush. I have a I have a two and a half inch cut in paintbrush. But don't use one of those four inch funky uh, paint brushes that you get with a whole kit. You know, I, I never do that. I, I wouldn't want to do that because even then you, you're going to get it. You're going to get it way over. Plus, even though I have masking tape up there, it's still difficult to get that into corners and stuff like that. So for, for all those reasons, I'm just going to, I'm just going to use this one here. I may end up, I may end up doing a couple different spots with this little one if I want it, just to show you it's possible. Okay, so that's my next step. I've got to get in, mix up my paint, and uh, I was using the semi-gloss, and I'm just using, I think it, I think it came right off the shelf uh, without them putting anything more in here. I told them I wanted the whitest uh, paint that they had, of which they didn't have to mix anything in it. That way, if I had to go back to the store, I could. If you ever get something on the, off the shelf like that, make sure you have them mix it. I don't care if they say it's only been on the, the shelf for three days. You have them shake it, and they'll sh run it through their shaker for five minutes or what, however long. And that's always a good thing to do that when you're getting paint right off the shelf. Okay. All right. So I'm going to get... My, um, my little paint tray ready and we'll be rocking and rolling in a minute. Now I have not mixed up the paint yet, but <laughs> I'm not gonna show you that. I was just gonna use my little paint tray like this and yesterday I painted the walls so I wouldn't use that one. If I used any at all, I would use the white one that I did the ceiling with. And that's all, that's all dry. I can pour the paint in there. But here's here's something else I could use. And I might I might use this. Um, remember I told you I I've got a little bucket. Let's see. I could put paint in there. And lots of painters use that. And it cracks me up. I've seen a lot of painters, uh, guys who maybe aren't painters who are handymen. And, and they and they hold it like this and after a while your wrist is going to get sore. Well, it's not designed to be held like that. It's designed to be held like that. See? See there? Look at that. You just you just put your hand up in there and hold it. It's it's actually quite easy to do and it's got a little magnet right there and it's designed for you could just you can dip your paint and then when you're when you need to use that hand when stuff you can just go like that see and then that keeps your paintbrush from getting in there and if I were to use that I'd only put a little paint at the bottom you don't want to put too much because sometimes it's kind of hard to see as you're poking it in there you don't want to get your paint too high up on the bristles like if I use if I use this brush here I would not want to put that much paint in you know in here I would only want to put a layer that's about that thick at the bottom in case I decide to, to go all the way down. It's only going to get here. You only, on a good paintbrush, you don't want to get your bristles painted all the way up too high. Then it's, then it's harder uh, to clean all your bristles and then after a while the, this end of your paintbrush up here gets stiff and then pretty soon it gets stiffer and stiffer and pretty soon you've only got a little bit left uh, if you keep your paintbrush uh, for, for a few years, you know? And in fact, this is a few years old already, 
but I try to keep it as clean as possible and I keep it in the little container and stuff. So, you know, I could, I could, I could do that if I want. Um, or I could, I could just use a little thing like this. This was, this was a to-go container for food. Momi had one day and, and it was right when I was painting. I thought, hey, I'll just use that. And when I was doing baseboard, I could put a little bit of paint in here or if painting a, just a door jam or something, or if she was helping me, I'd, I'd fill this little thing up for her and she could do that, wipe it off. And I, I could do that. I could, I could hold it like this if I want. It's only a little bathroom. I, I wouldn't use this all day long cutting in on a uh, ladder or something because my wrist would get sore. I would use something like this, see? And the last time I used this, I didn't clean it out, but I but I used semi-gloss in here so I can put some more paint in there without cleaning all of this stuff out and stuff, and I could use that, okay? So there's a few options for you. Uh, and look, look at this. I've been... This is just an artist brush. If after you get done cutting in and everything, your two coats, and then once you take your masking tape off, if you see a couple little spots where you have to just dip in a little bit and you're not really trained too well to, to use a cut in brush and, and to do cut in, you just use something like that if you wanted. You know, just to touch up a few different spots. And I've, I, and I've done that before using this and it works out really good if you're doing uh, you know, just one or two little things. I did a little caulking on one little screw hole in a wall and I got all the caulking uh, cleared off all the way around. Instead of using a big paintbrush and slapping the paint up there, I got this little artist brush and I just did the circle. And it blended in way better than if you take a paintbrush and go like that. Then you can see the flash mark afterwards. Trust me. Um, you'll see the flash marks if you look at the paint, if you look at the wall on a shiny day, sunny day, look at it at an angle, you'll see exactly where your, where your touch-up is. I don't care if the paint is the same exact color, it just never works. Okay, so next step is getting up there and starting to do the cut-in. Okay. I have not done anything yet. I've just put a little paint in and I'm just going to go for it. I'm using my, my little cut-in brush. I've got a little paint in that little tray. And see, because I have that masking tape up, I don't have to uh, crane my neck back too terribly far. Um, to put it up there because I've got that masking tape. See? I mean it would it would be it would be really tricky to do that without the masking tape. I think I could have done it, but I figured eh, I'm gonna do it this way. And you don't really want to soak it right at the angle. Right up in there I probably put too much kind of at a 45 degree angle, you don't want to put too much paint in there that way thinking, oh, the masking tape will hold it and stuff. Um, even if you're using the blue masking tape, you might find that uh, your paint's going to kind of get in underneath that edge. And I really don't want to see that where this was because that was grout. I could clean it off you know, if I get any on there afterwards, if I have to, but I'm going to try to get it on there, you know, up at the angle like that and try not to, try not to get any more on the masking tape than I have to. You see what I'm saying? And I can tell already, no matter what I do, I'm going to, I'm going to need two coats of paint. I don't care how thick of paint I could have had to put up there, it's going to take two coats. 
and then I'll check it. And if I have to put a little bit more up there, I'll put a little bit more up there. Hey, no problem. Because I can do it. Because I've got that masking tape up there. See? And this small little paintbrush is, is nice and easy to work with, man. I don't want to go over that edge any more than I have to uh, because of the variation that you may get from your paint brush strokes as opposed to the, uh, the paint roller strokes. That's all I can do. I can't, I can't even put it on there any thicker if I wanted to. And so the trick with using a tray holding it is making sure that you're watching what you're doing so you don't tip this crooked or something and um, have it start dribbling on the floor on your clothes or whatever. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I was initially toying not, not to install uh, to apply the masking tape and it would have been a lot more difficult to do it for sure okay and um, I got to set my paintbrush here without tr I'm trying to do it and keep the paint off me to uh, a minimum and So I got, I've got, um, oh, how, how's I going to do that? Oh, I, I remember. <laughs> I, it's not a, it's not a big rush. Don't, don't start, you know, trying, trying to contort yourself on the, uh, um, in the tub on your ladder and stuff. You know, we're not racing anybody, right? Got my my craft paper down here. Yeah, I, prob I probably should have used that other little container, but I didn't for, for my paint. That's okay. I'm okay. I, I can do it this way. You see, I mean, I'm I'm getting a little bit on the uh, on the masking tape, but that's what the masking tape is for. But I'm just trying to keep keep it off as much as I can and try not to put put it at too much of a 45 degree angle right up against there. Um, because no matter what you do, if you do that, I don't care if you put blue masking tape up there, the green masking tape, that frog tape, it's gonna it's gonna get behind there. If you Pack it on there at an angle. And that goes for uh, around door casings and uh, baseboard. Your masking tape is only so good. You know what I mean? If you're going to start saturating the corner like that with your paintbrush and just go whoosh like that, you want to you want to keep it up straight, as straight as you can. Okay. And with this little this little hand one, it's nice and easy to do it too. I'm just kind of tapping, tapping it in there, and see I can just go right along there. And because I put the paint on uh, the ceiling with my six inch paint roller as opposed to a nine inch, I only have to do a little bit on the, around the edge. If you're doing a nine inch, you had two inches, you can't just put it on like that. Now you have to brush it like that. And now you're, you're going to get at least two inches and then you're going to have to taper that in. So now you've got uh, paint all the way over here, um, you know, two and a half, three inches. So, so anywhere beyond the three quarter inch line, you, 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 you've got a third coat of paint. And then when I do 
and because I have to do two coats here, I'm going to have to put a second coat on that. Now you're going to have four coats of paint, two extra coats of paint from three quarters on over. Do you see what I'm saying? And once you do that, when that dries and you look at it, um, sometimes you can see it and you think, oh, I cut in and I used too much paint on my paintbrush when I was cutting in and it's not really the case. You just, you just uh, still only put two coats on, but it's because you had to go out so far. Do you see what I'm saying? So another good reason why I use the six inch and I use the uh, paint, uh, the frame, the painter's frame, uh, as my edge to get a nice straight line up there when I put it on. See, there's always a reason for everything, it seems like, you know. So, I'm just going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it rolling. And I'm going to do this little uh, section over here to a certain extent, just so you can see a little bit more. Okay. Very simple to do this, see? You see, that's why I put that masking tape up there. Just, I, I don't have to get much on my paintbrush. I'm just kind of dabbing it on there like that. And, you know, that's it. I don't have to put any more paint than that on that little section right there because I can't get it any thicker than that. Anyways, and you don't want to go back over your paint. I couldn't like just go over this other like right now because your first coat of cut in is just going to kind of slide off. And uh it's not going to work very well. So what I do is, once I get done with all my cutting on one coat, lots of times, depending how much cutting you're doing, um, you'd be surprised. This stuff is not going to take that long to dry. By the time you get all your cutting done and you wait just a few minutes, you're almost ready to start your cut in again and start in the very first place where you where you started before. And uh, that should be almost, that should be dry. But you want it to be dry, okay? You don't want it to be tacky uh, to put the next coat up because then what's going to happen is um, it may start sliding and pulling some of your first coat of paint off. And, and the other reason why you don't want to put, you, you're trying not to put too much mask too much paint on your masking tape, you don't want to build up that edge too much, okay? Because if you can imagine, if I put that on an angle like this, and just psh, 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 oh yeah, that's fine, and then put the next coat on that way too, I've got that much more paint on that inside corner, especially for the fact that it's semi-gloss paint, right? And so when I get ready to pull the masking tape up, I don't want to have the masking tape pull up any of the paint that I just put on if you build up that inside corner on top of your on top of your masking tape. You see what I'm saying? And so it's it's gonna be, I'm gonna to have to decide uh, when to take the masking tape off. I don't want to leave it up there too terribly long, but yet I don't want to uh, pull it off too soon afterwards. But um, you know, you just want to be careful when you're pulling the masking tape off. You don't want to just grab it and just pull on it. You, you may have to start it at one corner and then kind of uh, pull the top edge and kind of roll it down a little bit. And, and as you go, do it kind of slow. And if you see, if you see it kind of wanting to lift anything, you may have to take a, uh, a sharp uh, sheetrock knife or, or a sharp putty knife and maybe kind of just uh, mark the ceiling a little bit just uh, where you see some thick little bits of paint that you left up there when you're 
you're cutting in. Do you see what I mean? When you're pulling that masking tape off. So, so hey, you're going to have to be careful. It's just all about being aware of what you're doing and doing it right. Okay. I'm going to keep going above this door and I'll be right back and show you a little bit more cutting cutting in over here. I don't want to start cutting in over there and showing you that until I finish what I'm doing over here because it's not a good idea to start and stop, start and stop, you know, as you start going. You see what I mean? Okay, I'll just show you a little bit more just to make sure you didn't think I got lucky or anything. <laughs> okay. And if you can reach it without getting up on your ladder all the way, go ahead, you know, and I'm just doing, I'm just doing a little bit at a time, okay, make sure you get over to the edge of that masking tape all the way, and I like to, you know, in some, air, some places you may have to put your your paintbrush at an, at an angle a little bit and right at the end if you want you can try to go over it a little bit more with a little bit more paint but not very much I can still see that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to put a second second coat for sure on there you don't want to you don't want to slide too much of your paint off though you still want to get on as much as you can but without going over too far okay Masking tape comes in handy once again, uh, like that. And now I can maybe backhand this up. I couldn't, I couldn't paint this like this and cut in, backhanding it at this angle on my ladder uh, without the masking tape. Ah, I think I just hit the. I think I just. Get the wall right there. Look at that. Okay, I got it off. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Okay. You still you still have to take your time and do it right. Okay? And still be aware of what you're doing. Okay. Checking to make sure I don't have anything on my feet. And I'll keep going over here and finishing it off for the first coat. Here's something I wanted to show you. I'm all done with my first coat and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let it dry a little bit longer. Okay, so I don't really want to rinse this out. I could rinse it out, but see if I rinse this out then I'm going to have to wait until this dries all the way before I get into it with my paint again. So I've got some plastic here, and um, it's just from a plastic bag, and I already used it for my roller. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to wrap it up in this plastic. I've got, actually, I'm going to put a little bit more paint on here. On, uh, on the edge all the way up on the bristles and now I'm going to wrap that right here just that far that's it and I'm going to push on it and make sure it's tight okay and I can leave that boom right like that for 15-20 uh, minutes until I'm ready to start cutting in again. Okay? That way, um, the bristles aren't going to be wet. And I couldn't just leave that out in the in in the uh, air for 15, 20 minutes or half an hour. It's It would get all dry. So if I cleaned it all off, you can see how because there's so many bristles in that, it's it's going to, it would take quite a while for it to dry. And you, you wouldn't say, you wouldn't wouldn't be a good idea to say, ah, oh, it's, it's drying up, it's still wet, I'm going to put it into my paint. 
and start cutting in again, well, it's going to knock your, your paint, uh, body of your paint down. And once you get ready to put your second coat on, maybe your second coat doesn't cover all the way for the first wall or so. And that's because your paintbrush is still wet. Now see, I went, I went ahead and I painted the edge of this. Um, I'm going to take you off up here. And I painted the top of that edge and that was still the uh, tan color of the walls because they didn't, they didn't paint it white. And then it was kind of a dirty white from before the door frames. And, and because I painted all the new frames, I wanted it as white as possible to give a standout uh, from the walls and to make the baseboard and the trim the door casings and the doors kind of pop. It's almost the same color as the light switches, see? And so that's another reason why I wanted to paint that edge. And see, I got it all the way up there. It's nice. It's, it's, that's only one coat, but had I have done really super good, um, some of that paint would be on the wall, no matter what. And especially down here, I was able to get it in there and kind of pooch it in at an angle, but you can see how I'm over that far. Now, if I didn't have the masking tape, I would be that far over when I get ready to cut in the wall color. I might be able to get all the cut in done on one coat because I was able to do all the walls in one coat. But as it was on the, on the top, I had to put two coats. If, that, if the ceiling would have been white to begin with, I, I could have gotten by with just one coat. Even if it was a flat white, I might have been able to get by with one coat with, with one coat of semi-gloss. But because I have, if I would have put that on there, I instead of cutting in once on this wall around the door, I'd probably have to cut it in twice. Do you see what I'm saying? Or three times, depending how thick you get it on there. Okay. And so now it's just, it's just about uh, a waiting game to see how long I'm, I'm going to have to wait and see, I'll get you up there. See, no matter what I, what I do, there's no way I could have cut that in with one, one coat of paint. There's just no way that that would have happened. And that's okay. You know, get up there and put a second coat on there and it should be fine. Now, now if it on the second coat, if there's still a little bit of that showing, then I, then after I get done cutting it in, then I would look at it. And if I decided I needed to put just a little bit more, maybe I could dip my paintbrush in and kind of wipe on there. But hey, I'll do whatever I have to to get rid of that, of that line when I get done cutting in because I've got that masking tape on. You saw it didn't take me that long to cut this in. Okay, it's just uh, waiting and I'll probably wait probably 15, 20 minutes or so and check it out. Should, should I put my cover on on top of that? I probably should have, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it like that. I'll, I'll turn my construction light on off because the more light in here, the more heat. And then this is going to, this could start drying up. I don't want to put any skin in there. And what I could, what I could do is I could have cleaned this out with my paintbrush and put most of it back in there, you know, some, and, but I'm going to leave it in the shade. I'm going to, I'll leave it in the shade over there. And I think that's going to be okay. And you know what? That's going to thicken up just a little bit. And I might need just a hair more uh, thickness to it when I'm installing that second coat so I don't have to put a third coat on. See, when you're cutting in semi-gloss to semi-gloss, it's hard to get a good coverage like flat to flat or eggshell to eggshell because your paint wants to slide. And because the ceiling was a semi-gloss already, there's only so much paint you can put on with a, with a paintbrush as opposed to a roller at any one time. Does that make sense? So uh, I'll let this fully dry, put another coat on this whole thing, and um, I'll wait a little bit, and then I'll get my, have my construction light up on 
it's important to have light on there to make sure uh, that everything's blended in. If you think you need to put a little bit more on, a third coat, put a third coat on there. It doesn't take that long to put it up and you can do it and it's going to be nice because you've got the masking tape up there. All right. Now, I haven't been off the ceiling very long at all from that last little, little video clip. I, and I felt the paint in the corner where I started, right in there. And it's virtually dry to the touch right now. I could, if I was in a big old rush, I could start again and go there and, and uh, uh, work that back wall and then come out this way and, you know, work it back the same way that I did before and probably be okay. But because I'm not in that big of a rush, I'm gonna give it probably another, oh, I don't know, 15 minutes or so. And because you saw I'm only, I'm only putting on that much and there's only, you can only put on so much semi-gloss over semi-gloss. And, and when you're doing the cut end, you'd be surprised how short of a time it really takes uh, before that stuff starts skinning up and drying. You don't have to wait until the paint is dry on the back side all the way, but you want the front to be nice and dry to the touch so that the top skin that's showing is dry. Then you can put your second coat on. Do you see what I mean? Because even, even when you use semi-gloss paint, when you're painting door frames and stuff, there, is there a right and wrong way to paint door frames? Yes, of course there is. Because there's so, so many edges and nooks and crannies and, and lines and all that kind of stuff. You can't just start in w one spot and then think you're going to... You, oh, I'm just, I'm just going to do the whole frame from here all the way over. And I'm going to start right here and come down. It doesn't work that way. It just doesn't work. You can't blend your paint in properly and all that because semi-gloss paint, once you get it up there, you'd be surprised uh, how long, less of a time, you have it up there before you, you can not blend it in anymore with the paintbrush before it starts wanting to drag. And if you've ever painted door frames, Semi-glass, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Okay, I've got a video that shows you how to paint door frames on my channel. Uh, if you go to uh, my main channel page, click on playlists, scroll down to painting, and it'll be in there somewhere. All of my painting videos will be there, as a matter of fact. Okay, because, hey, whenever I do a job, I want to do it right. And more, more times than not, I make videos of it and post it on my channel under the painting because I never know what I'm going to say next, what's going to be included and what's not going to be included. Okay, so look for them on my channel and if you want to be a better painter or if you don't know how to paint at all and you've got a, a bathroom to paint or a bedroom to paint or a door casing to paint or a door, let's say just a door to paint, I'll show you how to paint those or the baseboards, how to get the baseboards looking nice and pretty or uh, door, uh, window stools and aprons, or the top of this. Is there a right and wrong way to paint this? Absolutely. The right, right and wrong way to do just about anything, okay? So I'll be back to you in a little bit, and uh, I'm gonna do the second coat here, and uh, I'm gonna wait, like I said, another 15 minutes, and I'll. I'll put this second coat on. Be right back to you. Okay, I just got done applying the second coat of cut in around there. And it's still drying, so I can't really show it up close to you to, for us to make a decision together. Do I need to put any more on there or not? And I remember to do the top edge of that door casing and that left hand edge and I went all the way down that edge is going to look really nice after it's all said and done and and somebody might think how did he get that painted so good up next to the wall well 
the trick is you do that side uh, cut in first before you do the wall. You always do the wall last for doing your cut in and everything. And now you know the reason why I put the masking tape down on there too to make it to make it that much easier to get it all up in there. And uh, I'm gonna leave that I'm gonna leave that masking tape on there actually. Um, once that edge dries, it's not going to take very long. And see, if, if I end up not having to do a third coat of cut in, see, I, I put this underneath there, underneath raw plastic, and got that pushed down, and, it's, and it, worked up, it worked out fine for the second coat. I'll make a determination whether or not I need to zip around here again. It only took me 10 minutes or so. If I have to zip around there again or not, or if I don't, then I'll be ready. Uh, take advantage every time you have your paint out. Okay, I still got a little bit of paint left in there. I still got my paintbrush wet. And then that's when I'll go ahead and paint this door casing. Like I said, from here to there, and I can just zip it around to the edge. I don't really want to have to touch this edge if I don't have, have to. Okay, then, then it, it, this thing is going to look really good. I'm going to end up taking that uh, strike plate off too. Okay, and like I say, I've got, I've got masking tape. I've got masking tape underneath here, see? So um, when I get ready to, to paint that, um, actually I can just leave this down here like that and paint it. And same thing, I, I've got everything all set up for that one too, okay? And see what I could have done, what I could have done is when I had this paint out, I could have uh, went down into here, but believe it or not, did you know that that's, there's enough room there for me to get my cut in paint brush in there when I get all done painting the door casing. I'm gonna end up painting the door casing first, I guess, does it? Is there a right or wrong? No, not really, but I'll, I'll do the door casing uh, first from here to there in case in case the edge of my paintbrush uh, gets over and nicks the wall or something. But this is not my cut-in brush, but if you can imagine this was my cut-in brush, I would just get it in there and I can, it, it's going to be that wide and it's going to go right down in there. You know, I, I'll start it. I'll start it up there, kind of at an angle, and I'll have to be careful, and it'll, I'll get it right down in like that. And um, I should be able to do it without hitting the door casing. And worst case scenario, if I hit the door casing, I'll have a, a damp sponge, and I'll wipe it off. Easy, okay? Painting really is not that hard if you just take it step by step. Don't be in a rush. If you think you're gonna get this bathroom done in a day over the weekend, um, you've got something else coming for you because it's never going to work. I don't care if how good you think you are, it's just not gonna work that way. Take your time, do things right. I mean, I spent a lot of time just cleaning off this grout because the paint was on some of the grout, and on some places it was, some places it wasn't. I spent, oh, I don't know, an hour cleaning off the old paint off of the, uh, um, the grout so that um, when I cut this in, when I cut this in, you're still gonna see that little bit of a grout edge all the way around here. And I looked at my other bathroom, and in the other, uh, bedroom and when they painted they ended up painting right to this edge okay showing no grout so when I get ready to paint over there guess what I'm gonna paint just like they did showing no grout and maybe I'll, I'll still mask off from the edge of this this way and uh, and do that I don't have to clean off the grout I'm gonna look at that and, and make a determination because if you will recall I actually had to clean off a little bit at the edge of the grout that was showing here well in the other bathroom there is no grout showing they painted it and so 
You just have to look at your existing conditions and try to match up. See that nice straight grout line there? It's gonna look just like that when I get done painting. And it didn't look exactly like that when I first got ready to paint because I had to take a putty knife and a little screwdriver and kind of clean off and a little wire brush and clean off some of the remnants of this paint because they didn't get it exactly how I wanted to see it. And so lots of times when you're, when you're going over somebody else's work and if you think, oh, I'm just gonna paint this, this uh, bathroom and the bathroom's 15 years old, I'm just gonna paint it just like how the last painter, hey, good luck with that because it's, that's what it's gonna look like when you get done. If you don't care about that, and uh, it, it doesn't look 100% and you're fine with that, fine. I'm not fine with that. I, when I do a job, I like to make, make it look like a professional did it and look like uh, I don't have any overages. Because if I, if I left some of that crummy old paint on the grout here and up here and a smear up there uh, and, and paint a nice straight line, when somebody looks at that, what are they going to see? They're going to see that and they're going to think, yeah, he, he, he said he painted it. It looks really good. It looks like crap. Look, there's extra paint over here and over here and over here. And the cut in line isn't straight. And, and, there's, and, and there's a ridge of paint over here. Well, that, and they don't know that there was a ridge of paint from before. And, and they would have seen that had I not scraped it off with the putty knife first. Do you see what I mean? So lots, lots of stuff having to do with, uh, is there a right and wrong way to do just about anything? Yes, the answer is of course, yes. Good grief, Charlie Brown. This is, this paint is almost dry. I think uh, it's still drying, but I can still see that it looks like it needs to be cut in again. Look at that. I can see it, and I don't know how well it's going to show up on video, right there. But and I can see, I can see right over in there a little bit, a little bit, and I'm going to let it dry all the way. But I have a feeling I'm going to have to zip around here a third time, and I'm I'm okay with that because I've got my masking tape up there, and I've got my paint brush ready. And so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go the extra mile. And I would do that for anybody. This, this is for myself where we're living. And I, I could pull it up and say, hey, screw it. I'm done. I've done two coats. I'm not going any further than that. I'm not wasting my time, blah, blah, blah. But no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna let it dry all the way. I'm gonna let it dry for another 15, 20 minutes again maybe a little longer this time uh, because I've got two coats up there now and that second coat might take a little bit longer to dry this time because it's going on new paint as opposed to the 17 year old paint if that makes any sense and I'm probably going to zip around again if it's even questionable and I have a feeling it's going to be questionable I think I think for most people they probably leave it but I'm not going to leave it because I've got, I'm all set up. I've got all the masking tape up there. And you saw how it's really not going to take me that long. It takes me longer to set the video camera up in a couple spots and, and talk about it than just going in there and doing it. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm going to do with the third coat around that. And uh, then, then at that point, um, I'll get ready to do this uh, door jam as well. Okay, because once I get done with the white paint in here, I want to be done with the white paint. I don't think I'll have to get into it anymore. Then I can clean up, wash up, all that kind of stuff. And if I was really in a big rush, could I possibly do all the cut in today for the walls? Yeah, I could. I could. I just wouldn't put any masking tape up on that top of the ceiling because that paint skin is very, very fresh. And by the way, if I were, uh, when I get ready to cut these walls in, 
Am I going to put masking tape up on the ceiling? I don't know. But if I do, I might, I might want to put the blue tape. I might want to put the blue tape as opposed to my regular masking tape. Blue tape is supposed to keep it so that uh, it's not going to stick and get sticky and pull down. But see, it wouldn't, I wouldn't have it up there for very long anyways. And so uh, I could get by with the other masking tape. But then obviously I would want to wait and let this paint dry and cure overnight before I painted and cut in these walls. So am I going to cut in these walls today? No. The answer is no. I'm not going to. I'm not in a big old fat rush. I just get a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, make my videos, clean up, all that kind of stuff. And uh, one step at a time, get my job done. Okay. And that's how you should do it too. Don't be rushing around. Do it one step at a time and you'll get it done and you'll get it done right if you spend a little bit of extra time. You know, it doesn't take that much longer to do things right than it does to do things wrong. You know what I mean? So spend a little bit of extra time. Have a little pride in your work because, hey, whatever the paint looks like when you're done, that's your signature, baby. Do you want it to be a good signature or do you want it to be bad? Your choice. You know, whenever I do a project, I always think how I could have done it differently, let's say. And I'm already looking. And I know I'm going to have to zip around here again. Okay? And, hey, it is what it is because I want this to look right. How I thought, how else could I do this? And I'm looking up here. And I used to do white ceilings like this without any masking tape up or anything. And where hit uh, the ceiling to a wall and the wall is going to be a different color I would just spooge my uh, roller cover right into the corner and and letting the paint come down onto the wall yay far you know with the mini roller and just push it up in there so that I wouldn't have to cut the ceiling in with a paintbrush like this and I thought hey you know what if I have another ceiling and in fact I might try that might try that in my next bathroom. I have another bathroom up here to do. Maybe, just maybe, I should run masking tape all the way around uh, the ceiling like this before I paint the ceiling. How about that? With my roller, then when I put my roller up there, I can get it right up next to the edge, let's say. Do you see what I mean? And I can virtually get 98% of the walls done that way and cut in. Worst case scenario, um, if, I, if I don't want to get too much into a, an inside corner, let's say I could, I could jump up there with just a, a little paintbrush and kind of fill it in when uh, just as I'm getting done with the paint roller. Do you see what I mean? Then I could just pull the masking tape off. Voila! No cutting in the ceiling. I think that's the ticket. I think I'm going to do that on this next uh, ceiling. And see, most of the time you're not going to have white semi-gloss ceilings to where you're going to have to cut in the, the edge a little bit depending what color was on the ceiling from before. And, and all that kind of stuff. You're only going to have small rooms like 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 here or a closet if you want a closet with white semi-gloss paint in it or a pantry with white semi-gloss paint in it or a half bathroom with uh, white uh, semi-gloss ceiling. You could do it that way. I think that's that's the ticket because then I would pull the masking tape off after uh, with the paint roller then I don't have to see any flash marks where the uh, paintbrush was to the paint roller. And if I get, if I get the paintbrush marks uh, too much paint on there, you'll stand back and you can see, oh yeah, I can see, I, I can see where he, he did that. He, he cut that in and, and it's cut in an inch and a half, two inches off the wall. And I can see it because there's more paint there, thicker, 
with him putting it on with the, with the paintbrush around the edges than the paint roller was on the rest of the ceiling, let's say. Now, I, I, you know, I wouldn't do that on a flat uh, ceiling paint, but like for a bathroom like that, I think that's what I'm going to do. And there's your tip. There's your tip for the day. If you're, if you're watching this, had you not been watching this video, you wouldn't know how to do it that way, would you? Because see, uh, up here, this ceiling here, this is just flat, uh, white, standard flat ceiling paint, it's called. And because the, the walls, the walls, I, I put an uh, eggshell finish on there, I just ran the white paint over pretty much uh, as close as I could with the roller. And if I got white paint on the wall, I was like, hey, I don't really care. Because when I cut, when I put this on and cut it in, uh, it's going to cover, and it did on most of it. But in certain areas, I had to, I had to kind of go around and check it. And in a in a few spots, I had to put uh, two coats of paint cutting in in certain areas where I got too much of the white over on the wall. Does that make sense? But I wasn't, I, and I, I I wasn't gonna think. Uh, do I put masking tape around the whole thing? I mean. Yeah, I could have put masking tape around this whole ceiling and done that too. And still got a nice straight edge on there and um, done it that way without having to do any cut in whatsoever. Masking tape, hey, masking tape could be my friend uh, and it could be yours too. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna zip I'm gonna zip around here again. And this is this is two coats. Two coats of paint that's already up there and you can still see up in there that I've got to put some more up there because this was a white semi-gloss and, and like I say, you can only put so much on there and it slide, wants to slide off your paintbrush and slide off the, the ceiling. There's only so much you can put on at any one go with the paintbrush. Okay? And so... You know, lots of places I don't need it, but in other places I can see I do need it. So I'm going to run a third coat. But my loss is your gain, and it's my gain too. I never would have thought of trying to do it this way. I would have tried to cut in without the masking tape. That's what I was planning on doing. That would have taken me forever. You know, especially where the grout line is in there. And granted, once I pull that up, I, there's probably going to be a couple spots here and there where I'm going to have to clean it off um, because it might have gone up inside uh, the top edge of the masking tape. That's why when you put this masking tape on, you want to make sure it's all nice and tight on the on the uh, the ceiling. But if I get a little bit of that white uh, coming down through onto the wall, because I still have to cut the walls, the walls in and the, and the uh, the walls on the inside and you you saw where I still have to cut it in you know here and here and all that kind of stuff I I'm still gonna do up in there I'll just cut that in freehand with my paintbrush uh, but uh, over, over here I'm probably gonna put uh, masking tape over that grout line I don't want to really do that freehand I don't feel like it but I should be able to get by doing that with just one coat on the on the walls but I think I've just figured out a quicker way to do white ceilings from now on especially if they're low ceilings put the masking tape around first and then using my six inch uh, I got a three quarter inch nap roller I could have used a half inch or three eighths nap roller or something but three quarter inch will, will still be fine and I'm going to end up doing that on my next bathroom and I think that's the ticket for me from now on when I do white semi-gloss ceiling so oh yeah okay I just ran a third coat of paint around there and I'm glad this happened as it happened because it got me to thinking how can I do this different next time and now you know what I'm going to do next time. 
Yeah. You'll have to watch that video and see how well I do with that, and I'm sure it's going to come out good. And as for as for plastic bags, you know the red. <laughs> I should have been careful and not wrapped anything with the red because when I got all done, I happened to notice on there that some of the red came off of the plastic onto my white paintbrush. I had to wipe that off and clean that off. Use clear plastic or if you have a bag, make sure it doesn't have any writing on it, especially red or blue or something like that. And just cut out the clear plastic bit. You don't need a whole lot to wrap around a paintbrush, okay? And so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna let that dry and then once it's once it's dry beyond, uh, uh, dry to the touch, then I probably should take that masking tape down. I'm thinking, uh, do you really want to leave that masking tape up there all night? Probably not. But again, if I take it down too soon, if I have any built up paint along that inside corner, I'm going to have to be careful about that. Because, it, because if, it, if I just do it w when it's dry to the touch, maybe the backside of the paint on top of the, the uh, edge, towards the top of the edge of the masking tape, it might still be wet there. And I might not want to mess with it and start pulling it down, get it all on my hands. I, I might want to wait a couple hours. Uh, and then I'll start pulling this off in one corner, be real careful. And then I'll have to make sure I'm careful about just pulling it off. You don't want to just start pulling it off, especially because it's a semi-gloss paint. Yeah, and, and now you've seen, I've got, I've got three coats of semi-gloss paint right up next to that paint, right up next to the uh, masking tape. And um, if I'm not careful, when I pull that masking tape up, once the paint has, it, has dro started drying, it's gonna get kind of rubbery. And so you don't want to pull it and then have uh, some of your paint start pulling off your ceiling where you cut in. Do you see what I mean? So I'll have to be careful with that and if I have to lightly uh, score it, I, uh, I would probably only do it with a uh, drywall, not, not, a, not a sheetrock knife because I don't want to cut a line. Remember I was saying I'd do it with a sheetrock knife? No, don't do it with a sheetrock knife. Just do it with a sharp putty knife, a uh, sharp edge putty knife. And see I got one that I've used so much it's gotten round. I could just I could just take that up there and lightly uh, score it along there if I need to in certain areas. I'll just have to be careful as I'm pulling that masking tape down. Okay, and um, don't leave the masking tape up there too long. Here's the other thing I had just painted this wall uh, the other day, so you don't want to leave that masking tape up there too long because when you get ready to pull it up, it might start pulling up the top edge of your fresh paint that you have on your wall. And another reason why you probably should use the blue masking tape instead of uh, regular masking tape. But, uh, you know, if I take it down in a couple hours, I should be fine. If I left it up there, um, for two or three days and then thought, oh yeah, I should pull that down. Then you might start getting an issue, okay? So um, remember that. What is my project today? Uh, I'm gonna be painting just this door trim from here down to there. This was a bathroom when we moved in. I didn't have enough time to finish painting uh, the bathroom. So when I painted the door casing and the doors, I painted the doors out in the garage and when I painted this door casing, I painted it uh, all the way on the outside, all the way over to about here, knowing that I was going to have to do this later and cutting in the top. I've already cut in the top. I put masking tape along the, the top edge and the left hand edge and I even got that top edge and it's best to do that whenever you're painting um, door frames because the white paint, this white paint is slightly different than the old white paint that they had on there. You see what I mean? And so now I just, I want to get in there and uh, 
paint that, and I'm just using a little cutting brush, two, two inch cutting brush. I just put a little bit of paint in a little container here, and um, all I'm going to do is one coat, and um, I'm, I'm going to like this top rail. I'm going to end up doing the whole top rail. Uh, from left to right, the entire thing before I do anything else. Because with semi-gloss paint, um, it starts wanting to skin up if you're not careful. But on this edge, I'm going to go ahead and do this corner, you know. And I figured since I did the, uh, since I did the, the edge, I'll just leave that, that masking tape up there until I get done. And with semi-gloss, you know, I had, I had already prepped these, these door frames and lightly sanded them and, and did some touch-up and caulked them and, and uh, made sure that the doors were plumb and, and I had to fix some sagging doors and stuff before I did the doors and adjusted everything. I did all that before, before I took the doors and painted them and stuff, okay? Now, you want to blend that stuff in and see, I don't want to go over to the far left again because the paint will have already started to, uh, um, to skin and I'm liable to uh, pull an edge. And if you've ever worked with semi-gloss paint, you know what I'm talking about when you're doing door frames, okay? I'm just getting out of that edge and now I can I can I can finish I can finish this and I'm just going down to there and now see I can go back and forth that way. I see a one little spot right there I'm gonna get. Okay, that's all I'm gonna do on the top. I'm not like I say, I'm not gonna go all the way over to there again because the paint is already starting to skin. Uh, there's only so much you can do on the door jam and the casings before it starts skinning up with, up with the paint. So you gotta kind of move quickly, evenly. And I took the door the door off. I even took the hinges off because I want to get this whole edge. You can't do that if you leave the hinge on. Oh yeah, I'll just paint around that. Way easier to do it this way. Okay. A little bit more paint on there. And now start where you left off and then and then I can I can taper that. You know, uh, I'm, I'm only putting on so much paint until I feel comfortable. Now I can kind of start from the top and come come down. Okay. And that's all I'm gonna do. Right there until I until I move down. I get you. Uh, you can see me. Okay. I'm not gonna go all the way up. I can see where I ended up because I have my construction light on and so forth. And uh, with this little, this little brush, man, it makes it so easy. Now I can take it there and just go up, you know, where I blend it in. Once you, once you know you got enough paint on there, you can blend it. And see, I can't, I, I can't go all the way up anymore because it's going to mess up that top bit I've already put on. But it doesn't matter because as long as I know that, and now see, uh, you saw I only, did, I only did so much up, up, like that, and that, and that little section's done. Okay, and so, um, it's not it's not a race and you don't have to you don't have to go any more than that 
and just only put on so much paint. Don't try to don't try to stretch it out too far. Try to do it about the same each time. Okay. I don't, I don't need to fill up that much on my paintbrush. I'm only, only going to go to there. I could go all the way down if I want, but then I've got to, I've got to get some more paint in there to, to get it all nice, nice and even. See, with semi gloss, you got to get your paint even as you're going. Okay, and uh, ah, I got to move. I gotta move that. I had some uh, uh, some craft some craft paper on the ground, and now it's moved a little bit because I've been in here working. And I've I've got the see I've got the uh, I'll just do that. I put masking tape all the way down, so I can I can do that. That's fine. And I can see where I left off right in there. And with this little paintbrush, you can hold the paintbrush however you want because it doesn't have a handle. And the handle is, is rubber. Oh, it only cost oh, less than 10 bucks at the store, hardware store. Okay. You don't have to be a professional painter Newsflash, and I put masking tape down on the floor, and when I get all done, it's going to look like a professional did this. And I'm not a professional painter by any means, that's why I'm making these videos for you. Okay. To show you, if I can do it, you can do it. Right? Okay, there. Just like that, and I am done with that. I've got to do, I've got to do the uh, the other side, uh, this left hand side. And I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to show you all that because I'm kind of, I'm kind of in the way. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to keep running the uh, the camera, I guess, and get you moved here. Maybe you can see a little bit of what I'm going to do here. Okay. And I had lightly sanded these, and these these frames were were like uh, 17 years old. And so I lightly sanded them, and I caulked them any anywhere where I needed needed to before. And see, I, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to hit anything over there. If anything, I can just hit that where I started. Okay. If you got 17-year-old door frames like these, you want to. I, I cleaned them with, uh, with some simple green. I think in certain areas where the hinges were. Lots of times the hinges will spit black stuff on there. I did a really good job with that. And um, I cleaned them, then I lightly sanded them, and then I, I checked them to see if I needed to do anything else to them before, before I painted them. So, you know, it's like it's all in the prep. It really is all in the prep when you're talking about painting. Okay. I, I, I know I, I should put a little bit more paint there. I wanna, I'm trying to get a nice even coat on there. And see from here, up, 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 blend it. You see a little bit right there, up. Because your paint strokes are going to show and your transitions between this little bit that I painted and that little bit and the next little bit will show if you don't finish your transitions like how I'm doing, okay? I'm trying to keep my, my head out of the way. I don't want to go any further than that. I could go down further, but 
I can tell on my paintbrush that there's only so far I can go depending on how much I dip in, in here. And if I do it about the same dipping, I know I can go down maybe a foot or so and get it all nice. And then I can go flat ways that way or I can keep going uh, this direction. Okay, like that. And I go down some more. Let's see if I can. If I can't get this finished. Uh, I try to stay out of your way as best I can. Okay. I'm only trying to get the same amount of paint as I did before and go down about the same. Then I know my the body. The full body of the paint is about the same all the way, see? Now I can take that and blend it up or blend it down. A light touch and then I know my transitions are going to be fine. I call it transition between each paint bit that I put on the wall, okay? Put that in case I spill. I don't want it spilled way over there, right? Okay, I'm only going to go down about a foot or so. See there, I think I've gone too far, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get myself a little bit more paint so I can finish this bit here. Okay, and I'm just trying to do this edge from here to there. Okay, there. science but and we're not in a race and if I was painting the whole door jam I'd be doing it the same way. Okay. That, that craft paper moved on me and I'm glad I I'm glad I um, I uh, put the masking tape all the way down on the floor. Casing because it was fairly close uh, paint color as everything else, but I thought you know it deserves to be painted the same. It'll match everything, and I'll know that I did a hundred percent job. And when that dries, I won't have any discoloration from the other color of the uh, white on the paint jam or any of that. This thing is going to look all nice and pretty. And, uh, you know, once I get done cutting in, my next thing I've got to do in this bathroom, I've got to cut in uh, the walls and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, um, so this is going to let this, allow this bit to dry and cure for a couple days before I put the door back on and the hinges and the strike plate. I even took the strike plate out. And it's always nice to do that. Don't try to don't try to Mickey Mouse it and leave the the hinges on and think, oh, I'll be careful and I'll get it back behind there. You're never gonna get it 100%. Okay, 
You're just not. And if you're not in that big of a rush, do it. Take it off and do it right, so that you don't get any pain on your on your door or your hinges or your strike plate or any of that kind of stuff. I went the extra mile, took that off. That thing's been sitting there. That door's been sitting against the wall for a few days now. And it can sit there until I'm done with this job. And once I get done with this entire job, it's going to look 100% professional, like a professional painter did it. And it will look like I was never there. That's what you want when you're painting. Now see, I, I haven't been off this that long. Um, and this is already skinning up. If I were to touch this, it's probably dry. I'm not going to touch it, but um, it's probably dry to the touch because it doesn't take very long for this stuff to start skinning up. Okay, so that's why when you when you start painting, you've got to, wherever you start, you've got to finish that row before. Don't think, okay, I'm going to be up there, so I'm going to. I'm going to reach as far as I can. I can only reach over to there, and then I can reach from the ladder from there down to there. Don't do that. If you start at the top, finish at the top, and then start the next bit of your door trim and start coming down and do the entire trim all the way down before you start doing the next one. Don't If you're up on a ladder or something, don't just say, okay, I'm going to go from here down to there. And then from here down to there, then I'm going to move my ladder. If you're doing an eight foot tall door, let's say. Okay, don't do that. Because then it's going to be hard for you to transition. You'll know what I mean because the paints, the semi-gloss paint's going to start to get sticky as you try to blend it in. And you're not going to be able to blend it in. And you leave it and then when it dries, you're going to see your stop and go marks from your paint uh, brush. Your stop and go mark there, your stop and go mark there. You're going to say, oh, that's what he was talking about. Yeah. Once you start, you want to keep going all the way down. And if I was painting this door jam, I would have done it an entirely different way. I've got a video of that on my channel. If you want to watch that, go to my main channel page um, on my YouTube channel and click on playlists. And then scroll down to painting. And I've got all my paint videos there. Okay. All right, this looks nice. Didn't really take me very long to do. And um, I'm going to wait a little bit longer. And then I'll pull that masking tape off. Don't forget to, don't forget to take your masking tape off, especially if you're going to do that when you're painting your edge. Okay, because you don't want the, the paint, uh, the, the uh, masking tape to start getting sticky before you pull it off or or for it not to come off properly or anything like that because you left it on too long. Okay, remember that. Hey, here's another tip for you. Yes, another tip. I never know when I'm gonna give another tip out. But um, when you wash this out, this has had paint on it for over an hour. I did three different coats up there on the ceiling cutting it in and I wrap this with plastic between each coat but invariably you're going to get some thickness of paint in there and so as as I was cleaning it I take a I take a steel wired brush you know kind of like that and then I get right in there in the bristles and get you know I first clean it as best I can first and then I get in there with the bristles and, and try to do that even on the sides and the edges. And I try to do a really good job. And then when I let it dry, I want to I want to try to have all the ends together the best I can, you know. And then before I paint with it again, you'll see that there's some edges uh, that are already coming out. See, I mean, invariably you get that you get some edges that aren't going to stick in there. So before, you know, once I put this away, I may wrap this with a paper towel too. I used to do that too. Wrap it with a paper towel and wrap it, wrap it, 
wrap it and then fold over the edge. But then even uh, once it's all dry, you're going to get bits that stick out, okay? And your paint brush is only as good as you maintain it, okay? So I would take these pieces and I get my carpet scissors and I would I would pull them down and I would snip those off. I'm not going to do it now. I'm going to wait until the whole thing is dry. And then I'll snip off, you know, a few of these because if you leave those, the next time you get ready to do cut in, you're going to get one of these that constantly hits the wall. Once you get a little bit of paint on one of these, uh, you'd be surprised at what it does to your finish, especially if you're trying to cut in a wall or a door jam or whatever you do. Okay, and it will make your paintbrush last that much longer. This thing is, uh, this thing, I've used this cutting paint in and stuff on this condo for all the painting that I've done. I've been using that. And um, I intend to use this for a lot longer. It, it really works out really well. If you see one of these at the store, most hardware stores now have these and usually they're less than $10. This one happens to be um, a two inch. I forget what brand it is. You don't have to, oh, it's a Wooster. You see it? Wooster. You don't have to get a Wooster. You, you can get you can get something else. But this, this seems to work pretty good. It's all you really need for doing your cut-in, your door jams, your baseboards, and all that. I wouldn't go, if I was you, I wouldn't go any higher than like a two and a half. And I wouldn't go any lower than this. You don't need, an, you know, they have these an inch and a half, even an inch I've seen. You don't need that. This will do pretty much anything you want. Okay, you get one too small, and then you're doing extra passes on a door jam and stuff. And uh, maybe the inch and a half just isn't really working out that well. Two inch works really good. There's your tip for the day. Okay, well about an hour later, I decided to pull the masking tape up. And this is what you're gonna see. not going to be perfect. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. Not going to be perfect at all because, why is that? Because there's spray texture on the wall. I don't care how tight you get masking tape. I don't care if you use the blue tape, the green tape, the regular masking tape. No matter what you do, you're going to get some on the wall. And I don't care if it's on the wall, do I? I don't care if it's on the wall like that because I still have to cut in the wall. When I cut in the wall, guess what? I'm not going to put any masking tape on the ceiling or anything like that because the, I'll have this, the dark gray on the ceiling because no ifs, ands, or buts. This, this is what's going to happen if you think you can you can run masking tape up there and just paint your ceiling and pull it off. Guess what? All that white paint is going to be on your finished paint of your wall if you're not painting your walls. I don't care how good of a masking person you are. It's just how it's going to be. If you have smooth walls, smooth wall, meaning no spray texture, no spray texture on the ceilings then chances are it's going to be way better than that but not when you have spray texture knocked down on the walls see what i'm saying but at least i've got all of the ceiling painted and had i cut that in with the with the paintbrush i could have done a way better job than that but it would have taken me forever because as you saw i had to go three coats over that and it's, I still would have had little bits and pieces here and there. And when you're cutting in your ceiling, you don't really care if you get a little bit on your walls. But I didn't want to get, you know, an inch of white paint down on my, on my walls. That's why I put the masking tape up there. You see what I mean? So when I cut in my blue, I only have to, a little bit of the white to cut in. I don't have to cut in 
uh, an inch, an inch and a half of weight on the walls and, and you know what's going to happen there. I'd have to cut in probably twice this way. Maybe I can get by with just cutting in once or I may have to cut in twice. I don't know. But hey, that's what's going to happen. And look what happened over here where my grout was. I'm not too happy with this, but I don't know what else I could have done. Uh, let's see if I can't get you in there. See there? See how the paint bled through the top edge because I couldn't get the masking tape down there 100% because the grout is not 100% flat. And see, I got some paint on the grout, some places not on the grout. I, I can't leave that like that. You see what I mean? But because I had so much grout, I had to decide, do I want to paint that whole line white or do I want to leave the grout line? And most of the grout line was okay. And in some places, the grout is sticking down from the ceiling by, uh, you know, a good quarter or a good eighth inch to three sixteenths. Did I really want to zip a white line around there at the top? I really didn't want to do that because they had the grout not painted from before. Now, if the paint, if the old paint was painted over that entire grout line, I would have painted that entire grout line. But look, look where the grout line is there. You know, their tiles are short from the ceiling by a quarter inch. I got a nice grout line up there. So what do you suppose I'm going to do with that? Am I going to leave it like that? Heaven forbid. You just... You just remember what that looks like, okay? And look over here. Boom, 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 boom. Look at that. I'm going to have to clean that off the grout. And I can do that. I can do it and I'm, I'll make it look nice and pretty. And I can... When do I want to do that? Do I want to... I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to get up there now and do it. That paint... Uh, I've got to think about it. Do I want to do it now? I don't want to. I don't want to get the rest of the grout line saturated with white paint, you know. But when it's all said and done, when I get done with this bathroom, I'm going to clean all of the tiles around the tub enclosure and on the tile floor, and I'm going to put a couple coats of clear sealer probably on this. And then once I get all that white paint off, once I put sealer on that grout. It, it, I'm going to have a nice defined grout line all the way along there again, right? So I could, I could leave this paint like this uh, for tonight and do it tomorrow, or I can do it, I can clean off most of that now. I, I'm not, eh, I'm just toying. I think I should do it tomorrow. Because see, if I try to clean it off now and start wiping on it too hard, with a bristle brush and all that kind of stuff, then I'm going to start getting some of the paint off the ceiling off of there. And I'm not going to have a nice straight line when I get done. It's going to be all wonky on the ceiling. Then I'm going to have to cut in this whole thing with the paintbrush with no masking tape, you know, when I get done cleaning. So I think I'm going to leave it like that for tonight. And then I'll clean it off tomorrow and try to do a good job. And then at when I get done with that, if I have to do any tight cut-in, I'll use my cut-in brush, or in small little areas, maybe i use that little artist brush along the ceiling or something. We'll see. And I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. Now here's the thing. When you put masking tape around there, I was basically putting masking tape around there so that I could cut that in without without uh, uh, properly cutting it in, without getting it on the wall. But after you take the masking tape off, this is what's going to happen. You're going to get a little bit of paint on the wall that went through the masking tape on the edge because there's spray texture on the wall, see? I don't care if I want to use blue masking tape, green masking tape, or the regular masking tape and push it down. There's no way you're going to be able to push it down every nook and corner on there if you got spray texture on the wall and that's okay that's okay because I still have to, I still have to cut this in uh, the wall paint to the edge of the door casing anyways right 
So that doesn't matter. I just didn't want this wiped all the way over to here, uh, how it was on my masking tape, you know what I mean? Especially, especially down in there. Okay, now when I cut in, the only little bit of paint, white paint I have to cover is from there to there. And when I, when I cover the paint, the blue, the gray paint from here over, that's going to cover not only this, this tan, it's going to cover that little bit of white, but not that much white had I not put the masking tape on. Does that make sense? So uh, I just wanted to show you that. I didn't want to give you the false hope. Oh, I'm just going to go and paint all my door frames because Video Joe showed me how to put masking tape on and you've got all existing, all your existing walls are painted. Let's say all your existing walls are painted and you just want to give your door jams a fresh coat of paint and you're going to end up painting all of your doors because you saw my video on how easy it is to paint those doors and make them look that nice and that you can do it and you can set them all up in your garage and I show you how to do all that and now you got this bright idea that you're just going to put masking tape on the edge here because you're not a very good cut-in person of, of cutting in a line and you're just going to run the masking tape on there well guess what it's not going to work is it especially if you've got uh, spray texture on your wall I don't care how tight you put that masking tape when you pull it off this is what it's going to look like and if that is your finished paint on your wall now you're going to have to cut in your walls all in so my advice to you is if you ever were to go and let's say you're just painting you just want to give your doors a fresh coat of paint you take all those out into your garage and you want to paint your door frames and they're all white now but you've got a bright white let's say and it's a slight difference of coloration between a bright white and the and the white paint that you have on your on the edge of your door jam now or your door uh, casings now what to do with that well my advice would be when you get ready to paint you're just painting your door frames and this is your existing uh, paint and you're not going to be repainting let's say don't paint this edge at all from here over okay just paint your new paint with your paintbrush from here over all the way wrap it all the way around wrap it wrap it wrap it and just paint to this edge okay you could still get all your door jams painted mask them off down at the bottom uh, where your tile floors are where your wood floors are where your vinyl planking floorings is and stuff like that at the bottom of something if you've got carpet you can kind of push the carpet back a little bit get your masking tape down there and kind of shove it down there and you'll get it further than where it is and then after you paint down to there uh, down to your masking tape, pull your masking tape off and then re-fluff your carpet back up, let's say. If you've, if you've got this type of carpet, you know. If you've got uh, uh, a level loop uh, Berber carpet, then just push your masking tape down as tight as you can, angling it down and then fold it, folding it over, and you'll be fine. Okay? So I wanted to to give you the rest of the story when you're putting masking tape down on the wall before you paint your door jams, okay? And you know why I did that? Because I'm just repainting the bathroom and I put new paint on there. I got it that close with the roller. How did I get it that close with the roller? Well, I show you that in one of my other videos. You care to watch that. And then I wanted to paint the rest of this door jam uh, because it wasn't painted from here over because I wasn't doing the bathrooms before we moved into this house. I thought I'll just do this later um, so that I can put masking tape on there, paint this edge because I wanted bright white paint all on this edge. I wanted it all to look 100% professional when I got all done. And I've achieved that because now this paint is all the way over there without me having to cut it in. I could have cut it in without putting that masking tape, but I wanted to show you how to do it with masking tape in case you're, you're not very good with your cut-in brush or, uh, you know, I wouldn't have been able to do that next to this cabinet, but now I've got all that edge because I put the masking tape on there first. You see what I mean? And now I don't have to cut the finished paint in 
as far to the white as I do. You see, there's hardly any white on that. Okay, so there's a little bit, but hey, that's fine. I don't mind that at all. All right, so now you know. Well, that's all I got for this time, but I'll be back with more videos.